Guys, welcome. Dan, second half playbook. What do you sell <laughs> heading into the second half? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to get into what you sell. What I would say is... Well, what, what area? What area do you lighten up on? Do you perhaps go a little underweightish? You know, to make room for the possibility. Yeah, well, uh, listen, if you think that this rally is going to continue, then presumably you're going to believe that it's going to broaden out because of the, the strength of the gains and some of the large cap tech names in particular have been so large, so egregiously large relative to history and relative to the rest of the index. You'd have to believe for this to continue that the small caps and the mid cap indexes, indices, which had a terrific June, are going to keep doing that. And to be clear, that spread between the large cap S&P 500, market weighted, market cap weighted and the equal weighted index is as large as basically anything anything we've seen since the inception of the equal weighted index. So you're at this extreme. And again, if you're going to expect the broad rally to continue, then that bottom end is going to have to to come up. That would make sense. OK, Matt. So strategically, if you're leaning toward small and mid caps and maybe some fixed income, because I know you like that, too, maybe even mm -hmm. if you're looking for tax advantages, how do you approach it in the second half? Well, I think you outlined it pretty well there. Um, you know, we're kind of barbelling a little bit. Um, we are a little bit concerned about the forward outlook for the economy. <laughs> and with that concern comes, you know, an overweight position in fixed income. Um, but if we're wrong on that, if, if we're a little bit too bearish about the outlook for the macro, uh, we do like some of the valuations in small cap and mid cap. And as Dan was noting, if there is a catch up tra uh, trade to be had, uh, small and mid cap to us are, are look, look to be you know, some of the beneficiaries of that. Um, Dan, do you believe a catch up trade is afoot or are you still not sure yet? Are you, are you convinced? No, I'm definitely not convinced. I, I mean, listen, I think that the, the consensus, the narrative has changed dramatically. Price momentum has a way of doing that. <laughs> um, we went from the world was ending in the winter to now everything is good, good, and a soft landing is, seems like for a lot of people it's the, it's the base case scenario, which would justify the increase in small and mid caps relative to the large caps, which is what you've seen. Um, I'm not convinced because I, I know it's become uh, something of a, of, of a a clown show, so to speak, to, to make fun of people who are still holding on to the idea that monetary policy can have negative effects in the economy. But I do consider myself one of those people who, who, who still struggle with the idea that as the Fed goes further and continues to hike, that demand throughout the economy is not going to suffer. And to its credit, you have not seen that in any meaningful amount now. The consumer has been resilient. Uh, manufacturing sentiment has been terrible, but output has been pretty good. But as we move through the back half of the year, Maybe the student loan stuff comes into play. Maybe those mysterious excess savings, that well of money that seems to never dry up, dries up. And, and perhaps demand is a little slower in the back half of the year. And so I'm a little less uh, convinced that the 10 percent rally that we I'm sorry, the 16 percent rally that we've seen thus far is likely to materialize into a 25 or 35 percent rally by, by year end.